Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I say to whatever, whatever, whatever. Hello, my wonderful friend. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson, once again. <clears throat> Welcome to another edition of The Shepherd's Heart. This program is geared to sharing the heart of the shepherd with the people. Father, we thank you so very much, so very much for all that you have done. Thank you for giving us life today, for breathing the breath of life back into these mortal bodies, these, these, these immortal bodies. Thank you, these mortal bodies. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for giving us life again today. I know some of us thought that we were just going to have life anyway, but, but no, you, you gave us life again today, as always. And so we thank you for the breath of life. Without you, we couldn't, we couldn't have it. And so we thank you that you are continuing to supply life for us, this life that you gave us. We thank you so very, very much for it. I hope, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we are using the life that you gave us to serve you. I know that there are some who are lost out there, Father, but I pray for them now in the name of Jesus that they'll come to know you in the person of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that for those who may not be, who may not be in the fold, who may not be born again believers in Christ Jesus. I pray for their salvation right now in Jesus' name. Let salvation find somebody this evening, this morning, whatever time they're viewing, let salvation come to somebody's house, Lord. I give you glory and I give you praise. I thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. I humble myself before you. I press myself down. I decrease so that you can increase, Father. Be high and lifted up. Draw me into you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, friend, for giving me space and time in your life today. Last time we were together, Bishop came kind of hard. Holy Spirit came kind of hard because he wanted us to hear what he was saying to us. This program, the, the title that we're using is being consistent, operating in the consistency of God's word, being consistent and operating in the consistency of God's word. God, our God is consistent. He is consistent. Be consistent means mean never changing. It means to be the same, unchanging in nature. That's what consistency means. That's what consistent is. The same. Our God is the same. Jesus, according to Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God is consistent, but he wants us to be consistent as well. And the way he did that, friend, the way God keep us consistent, watch this, keep us the same never changing in nature. The way he do that, friend, watch this now, is he left us his word and he gave us his Holy Spirit and we become one with him and he becomes one with us. That way we stay consistent. If it wasn't for us being able to stay consistent, we couldn't be saved. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't be saved, friend, without it. So, so I pray for those who don't believe that once you're saved, you're saved. You have to be, you, you'll, that's not God's will. God, God made it possible for you to be saved and he made it possible for you to stay saved. I know some of y'all believe, some of us believe that you can take yourself out of salvation. Once a person is really saved, friend, a real saved person, friend, don't want to go back, won't ever go back. <sighs> I'm going to do this because the Holy Spirit is leading me. I believe the Holy Spirit is leading me to do it. I'm, I'm going to show you something in John chapter six, one of my favorite Pass the scripture in, in the world, in the Bible, in the Bible. Listen to this, friend, because this is, this is the response of a true born again believer, friend, in Christ Jesus. If you are really saved, if you have really given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, you don't want to go back. You got to, when you read the scripture, you can't read it like another book. You got to read it led by the Holy Spirit, friend, so that you understand scripture when you read it. 
There are some scriptures in this Bible that may, that if you don't understand them, would make you believe that a believer could go back or would go back. True believers don't go back, friend. True believers don't go back. True believers don't go back. Once you're saved, friend, you're saved. True believers don't go back. This, listen, listen to this scripture right here. We in John chapter six, verse 66. Watch this, what it says. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Now, you got to understand he had many disciples in that day, but all of them wasn't saved. He even lets us know down here in verse number seven. I'm going to show this to you. Verse 67 says this. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou have the words of eternal life. Listen, friend, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the response of a true born again believer, friend. That's the response of a true born again believer. Watch this verse 70. Jesus answered them, have I not chosen you 12, but one of you is a devil. And it says right here in verse 7 and 71, and he spake of Joseph scared the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him being one of the 12. Now, now you got to understand Judas had his place. He had his place and Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. But he also knew that just like the Bible talks about certain people that have never uh, 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 a nation of people that's never come to him, even though they follow. They say they follow him and love him, but they've never come to him. He's chosen them, but they've never come to salvation. But that nation one day will be saved. The scripture talks about that. But once you really get saved, friend, once you really get saved, once you really, really get saved, friend, you're not going to go back. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 19 says this, they, were, they went out from us because they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt, listen, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. God is a consistent God, friend. God is consistent and salvation is consistent. We were saved by grace. We were saved by grace, friend. And the same grace that saves me keeps me safe. Our God is consistent and God wants us to be consistent. So he did things, friend, to help us to be consistent and to walk to walk this saved life and to live out this saved life. God has given us everything, watch this, that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that pertains to life and godliness so that we can live this life that he's put us on this earth to live, but we can live godly in the, in the process of it. We can still live godly too. Now watch this now, friend. I want you to understand that our God is consistent and God did things to make sure uh, to assure that we could be consistent as well. So God gave us his son. He gave us his word and he gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us his son, his word and his Holy Spirit, friend. And so we become one with Jesus Christ. Once we become one with Jesus Christ, we become heirs and join heirs with Jesus Christ, friend. Once we become a part of the body of Christ, friend, for real. Jesus says in John 17, I've lost none of them that you have given me out of the world. I've lost none of them that you have given me out of the world. If you've come out of the world, friend, God, and you've come out of the world, you belong to Jesus. He's lost none. Okay. We're talking about being consistent, friend, and you need to get to the place where you get in this Bible, get in this Bible. I talked about this, how, you know, uh, we cook things, but until, it, until it's been there long enough, it's not done. You, you got you to gotta let things stay in the fire long enough, right? A cake is not a cake until it's been there long enough to become a cake, right? I mean, it's in the box, it's, it's, it's ingredients, and you put them all together. It's still not a cake until it stays in the oven long enough to become a cake, friend. 
So we got to get revelation. We got to get revelation, friend. We got to get revelation so that we understand that we got to stay in this Bible long enough to get the revelations that God wants us to have in his word so that we're not back and forth, friend. You need to be consistent, friend. You cannot, listen what, the, what he had me to write. Consistency is the key to the success of the believer. There is no victory where there is no consistency. You cannot overcome where you are not consistent in the word of God and the things of God. You cannot be a, you cannot be victorious. You cannot live the kind of Christian life that Jesus came for us to live until we are consistent in his word. And so God has given us his word. And watch this now. The description says in Hebrew 13, that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Right. He changes not. The scripture says he changes not. Right. OK. So Jesus don't change. So he gave us his word that doesn't change. And this is consistent. And if we do this, friend, if we do this, we'll be consistent as well. If we do this, friend. Why is this? The reason we're failing, friend, the reason we're failing is we're, because we're not consistent. The reason we're failing as believers is because we're not consistent, friend. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, the Lord had me to say last time we were together in Galatians, it talks about the reason we're not well, Galatians say, but the Lord had me say the reason we're not having the impact and the effect on the world that we should is because of inconsistency is because we're preaching too many gospels. Watch this. We're preaching too many gospels. But if we do this, if we're consistent with this, we won't fail. Look what the, the, the verse says right here. Second Peter one, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. If you do these things, if you do these things, you'll never fail. If you're consistent in these things, friend. Your life as a believer is going to flourish, friend. The reason we're so in and out and up and down, uh, friend, lukewarm most of the time is because of the inconsistency in this word. <laughs> if I'm going to have the life that God wants me to have, if I'm going to live the life that God has purposed me to live, it's going to be because I'm consistent in this. It's because I'm unchanging in this is because my, I give my, my attention. I give audience to this. I spend quality time in this. Watch this now because the word is consistent. It don't change. You can be consistent if you stay in it. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse eight, here's, here's what helps you friend. You want to be consistent, be consistent in the word of God. Stay in the word of God. Study the word of God. Stay in the word of God, friend. Look at what it says. Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withered and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of God will stand forever, friend. If you want to be consistent, friend, if, if you want to live the kind of life that God wants you to live, getting this word, the word is consistent. God has left the word here. It's consistent. And if it's consistent, if you stay in it, you will be consistent. You won't be back and forth, friend. It's a shame. It's such a shame. It hurts my heart. It grieves me to no end. When I hear, I hear Christians make these kind of statements and we wonder why the world don't want to have nothing to do with the church. Don't want to have nothing to do with this God we say we serve. Is because we are like fish out of water, just flopping out. Watch this. I, it it nerves me to no end. Every time you turn around, we don't fail from something. I, I can't stay saved. I can't stay sober. I can't stay this. What, what kind of God are we serving if our God can't keep us? It's because we are not consistent. It's because we're not consistent. It, it, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's our fault. I, I, I love, I love the scriptures, friend. And one, another one of my favorite scriptures is, watch this now, Joshua chapter one, verse number eight. We just worried in 2 Peter 1, 10, that if we do these things, we won't fail, right? Come on, walk, walk with Bishop in the Holy Spirit right now. Watch this, because when you're consistent, look what the scripture says, Joshua 1, 8. 
This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. You see, friend, you, we can't just do some of this, do everything that's written in here. Look what it says. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's up to you. It's, it's not up to God, friend. It's up to you. You got to become consistent in this. If you're consistent in this, you'll make your way prosperous and you will have good success. You will be successful and you will prosper, friend, according to this word. If you if you are diligent at this, if you are consistent at this, you got to do it long enough, friend. You got to do things long enough. You got <laughs> friend, you got to do things long enough to see change happen, friend. Um, I like banana pudding and I like making, I use these, these, these analogies and stuff for your friend because it's important for you to understand. To make a custard for a banana pudding the way I make it, I have to spend time with the custard. I put all the ingredients together and I put it in a boil and I put it on the stove, but I got to stir that custard so it don't get lumpy. I got to stir it to where it becomes smooth and creamy. It becomes the custard. It becomes custard, friend. Because at first it's just milk, sugar, eggs, and flour, and salt, and so on and so forth. That's all it is, friend, until I get it. I got to be stirring it consistent. I got to stir it, friend, so it don't lump up and, and so it become, it become the custard it's supposed to be. I hope y'all can grab this, friend. Jesus spoke in parables to get people to understand. I can't just put the ingredients in the bowl and put it on the stove and expect it to become the custard, no, I have to stir it. And most people don't like making banana pudding uh, uh, from scratch like this because it takes time. Yeah, come here, friend, it takes time, friend, it takes time. It takes time. And it takes time for you to be able to see the things that, the, that, Bible, that God says in this Bible. It takes time for you to see it, friend. It's not going to just manifest just because you didn't flip through the pages a couple of times or you didn't spend a few. No, no, friend, it takes time. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, it says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not just because you heard it comes by hearing and hearing, friend. And so if I want to be successful as a Christian, I got to be consistent in this. I got to do this over and over and over again, friend, till it becomes a part of my life so I can see the manifestation of it, friend. It's going to happen if you give it the time that it's a, <laughs> it's going to happen if you give it the time. It takes time, friend. I know our world is microwave fast and you can do it, but that not according to the word of God, friend. You got to give your time to this. You got to be consistent in this, friend, or it don't happen. So the, so, so the word of God, the word of God is not going to go away. It's going to stay the same. The word of God is not going to change. Listen, listen, listen. Let's go to another verse. First Peter chapter one. Let's go to first Peter chapter one. God made it possible for you to be consistent. But the way you do that is you get in the word that's consistent, friend. First Peter chapter one. Listen to this. First Peter chapter one. Verse number 25. Look at what it says, friend. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And this is... God had me to say, the Holy Spirit had me to say last time we were together, friend, the reason we are not effective is because we're preaching the wrong gospel. And if we're not preaching this word, friend, then we're preaching another gospel. If we change this word, we preaching another gospel, we add to it, take away from it, we preaching a whole nother gospel then, friend. Look, but the word of the Lord endureth forever, forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The reason bishops stick to the word, friend, is because, watch this now, because faith coming by hearing. And bishop want to see your life change because God want to see your life change. He said he want the rest of this year to be the best of your year. Well, you got to be consistent in order for that to happen. You got to be consistent in the things of God, doing the things that God is telling you to do for that to happen. Jesus said, I came that you might have life, have it more abundantly, but you got to be consistent in walking with God for that to happen, friend. You can't be hitting and missing. You can't have a part-time relationship 
relationship with God and, and live the kind of life that Jesus came for you to live, it don't work, friend. You can't work a part-time job and expect a full-time salary. Listen, friend, you can't work a part <laughs> You can't work a part-time job and expect a full-time salary, friend. You want full-time salary, you got to work a full-time job. You're not going to get a full-time salary off of 20 hours. It's 40 hours a week. Full-time is 40 hours a week, friend. You want full-time salary? You got to work 40 hours for that. You want full-time? You, you want what it takes to get a manifestation? You got to work full-time for that. You can have a part-time relationship with Jesus Christ and get what this Bible says you're going to have. That's not how it works, friend. You can stay consistent. I can stay consistent because the word of God is consistent. And if I stay true to this, friend, I'll have what this says I can have. But I got to stay consistent, friend. I got to do this. I can't change. I can't veer off to the left and to the right. Can't do this part time. I got to be full time with this. Somebody's going to get this. Somebody's going to, your life is going to blossom because see, ain't nobody told you this. See, you think you can just do this Christianity any way you want to and you're going to have what the Bible says. No, that's not going to happen, friend. You got to do it exactly the way the Bible says it to have what the Bible says and you have to do it long enough. As long as the earth remain there, seed, time, and harvest, friend. Seed, time, and harvest, you see? You got to put it, okay. You don't just go to work and you walk in there and get a paycheck, right? No, you go to work, put in the work. You got to put in the work, and you got to do a week's work of work, or, or whether you, uh, you may work at a place where you, you work two weeks on and, and a week off, or you work two weeks and get paid. But, but you got to work. In order to get paid, friend, you got to work up to, to, to the period that, that it takes for you to get paid, friend. <laughs> if you want what this Bible says, you got to work, put in the effort, friend, to get what this Bible says you can have. You got to be consistent in that and not and unchanging in it. Got to be consistent, friend, in order for that to happen. I know you, you've been taught that if you just sow a seed, just, just go to this conference or whatever, and, and you listen to this message on TV and, and just sow a seed, and this is going to happen. That's not the way it works, friend, because if you sow a seed, that means you planted the seed. Guess what you got to do? You, seed, time, harvest. You got to plant it, then you got to give it time, then you harvest it at the right time. I'm helping you, friend. Holy Spirit is helping you right now. You're going to have to be consistent with this. And God made it possible. The word don't change. And guess what? So because the word don't change, then you won't change. If you stick to it, go to Matthew chapter five with me just quickly. Matthew chapter five. Let's take a look at this. Let's. OK, Lord. I, OK, I'll do this. Holy Spirit is leading me to go to Numbers chapter 23. I want to show you something. Let's go to Numbers chapter 23. Let me show you this. I got you, Lord. I got you. I got you. I got you. I, I understand. I thank you. I understand. Listen to this. Numbers chapter 23 and verse number 19. Listen, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall it not be made good? Now, now watch this now. Watch this now. Why would verse 20 say, behold, I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Now watch this. Why, why did the host be go here? He said, because he needs you to understand that he's not lying about this. If you are consistent in this, what I say is going to happen is going to happen. And I command a blessing upon your life when you're consistent in this. I've commanded a blessing upon your life that will come upon your life, friend, if you become cons Oh, Lord, God is good right now, friend. God is good right now. He said, I want you to know that I'm not lying to you about this. I'm telling you, if you do what I'm saying to you to do right now, there's a blessing that I have commanded on your life. Good Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Friend, listen. <laughs> listen, friend. Listen, friend. He said, I need you to understand that I'm telling you to do this so that the, the, the blessing that I've commanded on your life will happen and it can't be reversed. It can't be changed. If you do what God is telling you to do right now, there's a blessing that God is commanded to come up on. Oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, friend, 
This is timely for you. This, this is how much God loves you. This is how much God loves you. God said, listen, if you do what I say, I'm telling you, I'm not lying to you about this. If you do this, your life will be blessed, friend. There's a blessing that I've commanded to come up on your life. And all I'm waiting for you to do is be consistent in my word. Be consistent in your relationship with me. And I'll show the people what you do in secret in, in public. I'll bless you in public for what for the time you spend in secret for your consistency. Oh, friend, come on here, friend. Come on here, friend. Come on here, friend. Come on here, friend. It takes a while for me to get that custard to where it's supposed to be. But friend, after I get it there <laughs> and I add them bananas and them, them vanilla wafers to it, friend. Oh, it's a blessing because because I took the time to do it. I'm blessed after I finish because I get to enjoy. Come here, friend. God said you will get to enjoy the blessing that he's commanded on your life when you become consistent. Y'all, y'all, somebody in TV land, come on, grab hold to this right here, right now. God said you will begin to enjoy the blessing that I've commanded on your life when you become consistent in your relationship with me. When you become consistent in operating in the word of God, friend. You will be able to enjoy the blessing, friend. Oh, wow, friend. God is doing this for you. God is letting you know that he is not joking. He's not playing. He wants your life to change, friend. He wants your life to change. And the way that's going to happen is you're going to have to become consistent in operating in the word of God, friend. Don't deviate, friend. Don't compromise when it comes to the word of God in your relationship. Don't compromise. Stay true to this, friend. Stay true to this. It's amazing that God would have me to end this broadcast, friend, with this particular scripture. He said, because I need for them to know I've commanded a blessing on their life. If they become consistent, they're going to be able to enjoy the blessing that I've commanded on their life. Friend, this is good. This is good, friend. This is good, friend. This is good. Grab hold of this, friend. Please become consistent. Come on, come on, let's do this so that you can experience the change that God wants you to have in your life, the change that's, that's coming. Do this so that you can experience God in the way that he wants you to experience him right now, friend. He didn't have me to read this. God promised, he said, I've, I've, I've commanded a blessing on your life and all I'm waiting for you to do is be consistent. All I'm waiting for you to do is to become consistent. Friend, I got to wrap this up. I, I thank you for allowing me space in your life. Thank you so very, very much for allowing me to be who God is calling me to be for you in this particular hour. Change is coming, friend, but you got to prepare for the change that's coming so you benefit from it. Know that Bishop is praying for you. And I love you to life, friend. Remember KPLE and your praying and in your giving. Until next time, friend, may God bless you. And may God keep you as my sincere prayer for you. Until next time, bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll say to whatever, whatever, whatever.